Winston Churchill once said that history is written by the victors. If video games have victors, it's certainly the franchises who won their respective genre wars. For decades, the same few names have dominated the zeitgeist, so much so that they feel immortal. Take for example the first person shooter. The biggest names today are the same as they were two decades ago. Counter-Strike, Call of Duty, Halo. But there's one glaring omission from this lineup that still puts up stiff competition. Time Splitters. Developed by Free Radical Design Limited, this series would go on to revolutionise the console shooter. Each game features a vibrant campaign, addicting arcade mode, robust multiplayer, and unlimited potential from user-generated content. Coming from an era before Fortnite's endless metaverse, Time Splitters is a playground of potential. Any time period, character, weapon, or scenario is on the table, allowing its seasoned developers to express their boundless creativity. Yet, while its contemporaries are still dropping new games in 2023, Time Splitters is stuck in the past. However, Time Splitters hasn't become undone by 20 years of FPS innovation. The first game's control scheme set the standards still used today, and the series' history-hopping premise and unique art direction has helped it stand the test of time. In an era dominated by modern warfare, Far Cry and Fortnite, Time Splitters remains unique. At least in my opinion. This video is a concise love letter to an almost forgotten FPS series that I have recently fallen in love with, and my ultimate goal is to convert you watching this video over to Team Time Splitters. With rumours of a fourth game on the horizon, Time Splitters could, and more importantly should, be the victor of the FPS wars. But that can only happen if there's a fan base ready and waiting to receive it. I'd like to begin my pitch for why it's time for Time Splitters with an introduction to how I fell in love with the series. Although Time Splitters was around when I was getting into games, it's only recently I played the series for the first time. Spurred on by research for a podcast on forgotten FPS games, I ended up falling head over heels for the franchise. Granted, that could have been because Time Splitters compared far more favourably to the duds previously covered. That said, what spurred the series on was my fascination with Time Splitters developers Free Radical Design Limited, and that's because of their association with my favourite video game developers. Rare. It's there that the team honed their expertise and the quirky identity that would go on to inform Time Splitters. Free Radical story begins in the time of apes. In 1994, Nintendo released Donkey Kong Country for the Super NES. While gaming's most popular primate helped move copies, it was cutting-edge graphics made possible by SGI workstations that made Country a bona fide hit. Its enormous popularity galvanised DKC's developers Rare, who quickly built talent to capitalise on their success and further explore SGI graphics. As Polygonal 3D was still a new frontier, Rare found technicians from outside of the games industry familiar with this state-of-the-art hardware. An architect, a biochemist, and a Unix programmer. The first project this oddball team worked on was the arcade game Killer Instinct, an eye-popping demonstration of what pre-rendered CG technology could achieve on more advanced hardware. Interestingly, that hardware would go on to form the basis of Nintendo's next big console, the N64. It was on this new platform that the team would find greater fortune when their parent company offered them the opportunity to develop a new title around a resurging film franchise. In 1997, following a two-year incubation period of experimentation, they produced GoldenEye 007. Although its single-player campaign captured the excitement of playing Piers Brosnan's Super Spy, GoldenEye's suite of multiplayer modes would captivate console gamers that had yet received a truly great FPS outing. It would go on to be a Nintendo 64 bestseller, and arguably the most important game Rare have ever produced. 
So many titles owe their existence to this landmark release. Steven Spielberg's Medal of Honor, Bungie's Halo, and of course, every bad licensed FPS game that looked to imitate the success of Bond. Not bad for a team that began with no game design experience. With the trio fast becoming a known quantity in the games industry, they wouldn't stay at Rare for long. Unsatisfied with the production of GoldenEye's spiritual successor, Perfect Dark, these three left the company to develop their own IP and experiment further with console shooters. Settling just 40 minutes north of Rare's Twycross offices, this new Nottingham-based developer dubbed themselves Free Radical Design Limited. Backed by IDOS and Sony, the group took less than a year to produce their first game, the PlayStation 2 launch title, Time Splitters. Although rudimentary by today's standards, the first Time Splitters would be a huge success for all three parties. It wasn't just the first FPS game available for PS2 owners to enjoy, but it was one of the few that supported four-player multiplayer on launch day. Importantly, the pedigree of Free Radical's previous work shone through, bolstered by next-generation hardware. Across three games and almost three years, they refined the series into one of the finest shooters the pre-broadband console space enjoyed. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So what exactly is Time Splitters? In every game, players are put in the shoes of a period-appropriate character, and asked to navigate a number of genre pastiches, falling into a predictable theme of either crime, horror, or science fiction. Like Bond and Perfect Dark, Free Radical leans into the look and tropes of cinema, with send-ups to Hong Kong action movies, westerns, and B-movie science fiction. Despite having to balance dozens of styles, the entire package is tied by Time Splitter's unique art direction. For its cast of characters, Free Radical avoided the photorealism trend of the time and embraced the shapes and proportions of 90s comic books. Silhouettes and animations are purposefully exaggerated, not just to make these characters more appealing, but more legible in the heat of combat. Eschewing away from boring soldiers and space marines, Time Splitter's unique setting allows players to step into fond caricatures like a groovy 70s detective, a sleek cyber hacker, and even oddball entities like a gingerbread man or a chimpanzee. That look didn't just stop at Time Splitter's playable cast. Every setting has great attention to detail, down to each time period having appropriate gun models. The aesthetic expertise even extends to Time Splitter's music suite handled by ex-Rare composer Graham Norgay, who stretches his abilities to give each time period an appropriately rousing battle track. Although all these disparate elements could be tonally dissonant, Free Radical fortunately brings over Rare's sense of humour for time splitters. A player is never at risk at picking apart the experience because ultimately, it doesn't take itself too seriously. On his most surface level then, Time Splitters is a unique package. Perhaps its most relevant contemporary might be Epic's Fortnite. That game too has hundreds of disparate elements made cohesive through a consistent and appealing art direction, and its lackadaisical tone is a great fit for its intended audience. But comparisons to Fortnite stop there, because Time Splitters is very much not a battle royale. Although characters and locations change, the challenge of Time Splitters remains the same. In the first game's campaign, that challenge is simply to get to the centre of a level, collect a trinket, and return to the start. Standing in the player's way are setting appropriate bad guys, and eventually the titular Time Splitters, an alien race that fights humanity by rewriting its history. Although technologically advanced enough to time travel, these aliens are still put down by a well-placed gunshot. This campaign sounds simple, and it is, but what drives the challenge is Time Splitter's high score driven design. Not just for bragging rights, players are encouraged to replay levels on higher difficulties to unlock new gameplay modes. Unlike the campaign, these extra modes are simpler activities like defending a single point from waves of attackers or seeking out and eliminating a number of enemies in a level. What makes this one to push for higher scores appealing is that Time Splitter's is tuned for fast run and gun action. The first game employs a modern twin-stick control scheme, a rarity for the time it was created. 
and while its speed is comparable to PC contemporaries like Quake, soft aim assist and comfortable controls make it work on consoles. Compared to modern aim down sight shooters, there is an appreciable swiftness to the aiming in time splitters. Giving its shooting a little more brains, body part aiming is carried over from Goldeneye, such as having to remove the heads of enemies in zombie levels. Though the shooting of time splitters is simple, and ultimately that is what makes it massively appealing. In a weird way, I'd describe the experience of playing Time Splitters 1 to playing a great platform game with guns. Levels are focused obstacle courses, but they constantly shift out of settings and scenarios. The shooting always stays the same, but the who, where and why is constantly tweaked in interesting ways. But with TS1 there was room for improvement. And fortunately, Free Radical would make the next game of the series one of the greatest FPS games ever produced. Not bad for a studio formed by a former architect, biochemist and a Unix programmer who got their start in the industry thanks to Donkey Kong. Like how Free Radical developed on their previous Rare work for TS1, Time Splitters 2 is as good as it is because of how it developed on the first game. The title brings over what worked in Time Splitters, makes it more robust and experiments with new ideas. TS2's campaign, for example, elevates the story mode of the first game from simple obstacle courses into a fully realised adventure. Missions now feature robust cutscenes, voice acting and a completely reworked objective design. Its levels, composed by that former architect Carl Hilton, split the difference between mini sandboxes and light gun galleries. Players are always filtered towards action set pieces, but are encouraged to seek out additional objectives in the open world. Not only is it a better training tool for multiplayer, but TS2's campaign makes an already appealing cast and concept more so because there's just much more to it. Scenarios include a venture to a Mayan temple as a British colonizer in the early 1900s, infiltrating a cyber den as a hacker in futuristic Neo Tokyo, and escaping from a villain's secret base as a groovy 70s spy. Every level of Time Splitters 2 feels like it would be the best section of another FPS game, sequenced into a mixtape of greatest hits. But it never loses focus of that running gun action that made the first game a success. This is why the third and so far final Time Splitters game is a slight disappointment. Future Perfect's campaign is noticeably similar to other FPS games of its time. Not only is there a bigger focus on story, it has vehicle sections like Halo, gravity gun puzzles like Half-Life 2, and instead of players embodying different period appropriate characters each level, they're stuck in the shoes of the marketable space marine Cortez. Fortunately, Time Splitter's sense of humour makes what would be a boring protagonist charming. It's time to I gotta go. And indicative of the rest of the game, stand out from his FPS peers. The creativity of new scenarios and settings somewhat remains, and in the game's final moments, Free Radical even adds new texture to the concept by mixing time periods together. But Future Perfect ultimately can't hit the creative highs of its predecessor. It went from innovating to imitating a dire move for a series built on novelty. Fortunately, that novelty remains outside of the story-driven campaign. Time Splitters 2 and Future Perfect have far more varied and robust arcade and side activities than the first game. It's in these extra modes that Free Radical squeezes as much creativity as possible out of an FPS game, and it's ultimately what sums up the series' greatest strength – its breadth of innovation. Time Splitters looks to appeal to almost everyone, whether that be through an appealing art direction and unique premise, or just the sheer amount of content available within. While I can't relive Time Splitters' halcyon days of 4-player couch multiplayer, it's going to take a while before I run out of high scores to achieve and things to do elsewhere. And better yet, I can still enjoy the multiplayer today because each game in the series features full bot support a rarity for console games then and now. And Time Splitters isn't just about the talents of its developers, but also letting players show off their own creative abilities. The first Time Splitters was one of the first console titles to fully embrace player-generated content via a map maker, allowing would-be designers to craft their own arenas. 
And granted, although it's rudimentary compared to Halo's Forge and Fortnite's Sandbox, the map maker's ease of use and focus on prefabricated pieces means that the skill floor is lowered for all comers. Although developed before internet storage became ubiquitous, maps could be shared over memory cards, making them all the more personal to players and their friend groups. Time Splitters then is a celebration of creativity, not just by its seasoned developers, but the players that gelled with it. All in an era where content would need to be pressed to a single disc, long before microtransactions and battle palaces were invented. If Time Splitters was able to achieve all these feats before George Bush's second term in the White House, why hasn't it gone on to become an immortal franchise like Counter-Strike, Call of Duty or Halo? Well, although their games were enormously popular with critics and customers alike, Free Radical Design was undone by a rapidly shifting games industry. The third Time Splitters game was hampered by Electronic Arts' executive meddling and its advertising budget was slashed so that the publisher could bolster their own internally produced GoldenEye game. Although critically well received, its sales fell well below expectations. However, Time Splitters 3 did not kill the company. It being a number of cancelled projects and the enormous failure of Haze, Free Radical's follow on game that would bankrupt the company and prematurely end the Time Splitters franchise. A number of unsuccessful attempts to revitalise the series haunted the high-definition era, only to finally peter out as a new era of FAS players moved on to games like Modern Warfare, Far Cry, and Fortnite. Only now are we seeing some of its best ideas return, but there's very little DNA of the original Time Splitters seen in modern games. Ironically, a series about time travel was unfortunately too ahead of its time. It's fortunate then that Time Splitters 2 has been kept available through the tireless work of fans. Remakes have happened across the decades since its release, leveraging popular engines to bring it back to life. Yet it would be Homefront the Revolution, developed by former Free Radical staff, that put Time Splitters 2 back in mainstream conversation. Although the base game features an arcade machine with only two campaign levels available to play, the entirety of TS2 is within this title ported to high definition. Whilst console players have to use codes to unlock it, PC players can easily patch Homefront to launch straight into Time Splitters 2. Interestingly, when news broke of its inclusion, sales of the disappointing Homefront sequel skyrocketed. It's likely this phenomenon, and the continued fan interest in the series, made the prospect of reintroducing Time Splitters a more intriguing prospect to free Radical's new owners, Embracer Group. There's certainly something poetic in that one of the first games on consoles to champion player creativity has ultimately been kept relevant all these years later by those same players. More so, their love and support for Time Splitters persists into 2023. Whilst you're watching this, savvy internet detectives continue to discover new leads on what could be Time Splitters 4. So far, they've uncovered decades of concept art and game design documentation, and collated them on wikis, discords, and even YouTube. Part of the series' appeal is that its time-travelling premise opens the door to any and all opportunities, but the sheer quality of previous releases is a guarantee that whatever Free Radical try will likely land. It's exciting then to look at these concepts like blended time periods in the campaign and wonder how those scenarios will play out. There's even concepts for time periods before Firearms were developed these series as yet to broach. As a newly minted member of Team Time Splitters, I'm ecstatic at the prospects of not only the series coming back, but where it could go. Very few FPS games exist today that aren't aping the formula of Modern Warfare, Far Cry or Fortnite. And Time Splitters 4 could be the game to show other developers another way is possible. It might even inspire indie developers to take its best ideas forward and create something fresh. History is written by the victor, and my hope is that Time Splitters gets the opportunity to lean into its time bending premise to rewrite its troubled past and forge a perfect future. Discovering the series in 2022 was an introduction to a world of FPS games I didn't know could exist. It's one that squeezes all the creative opportunities out of the simple joy of shooting things, by constantly shifting out the who, what, where, when and why. 
Tiny Splitters is a product that could only have come from a seasoned developer at the height of their powers, and it's one that is thrived thanks to the tireless efforts of his greatest opponents. My hope is that, even if Tiny Splitters 4 ends up nothing more than a space-time anomaly, is that these previous games will still be discovered and beloved in the years to come. The series has always championed player expression, and two, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Time Splitters. Are you keen to see a return, or perhaps give it a try for the first time? For a deeper dive into the history and games of Free Radical Design Limited, my podcast Bullet Time has a complete mini-series on the subject, featuring the commentary of video makers you'll likely recognise. Bullet Time is available on YouTube and the major podcast platforms. Until next time, I've been James, and I'll see you all in the next upload.